Hello everyone, this is Ron from iTech Legion. It is season of Computex, so that means new updates and new products such as this Griffin mainboard. It is a micro ATX motherboard from ASUS, uh, first of its kind. And of course, just like other tough motherboards from the uh, same series as the Sabertooth line, it is made of military class grade components and it's known for durability. But of course, it is now in a micro ATX form. So let's open up the package and see what we can find inside. The ASUS Z87 Griffin is a micro ETX form factor mainboard, hence the small packaging. Inside, of course, you get the mainboard itself in a separate compartment, an anti-static bag. So let me just put that aside. You go over the accessories and find side here. You get, as with all the other tough board, you get the certification of reliability. It tells you which component uh, which of the tests and which of the components pass which standard? They have a list of military tests there and verified. You have the laboratory that did the testing and you have the five year warranty. Of course, so the tough series are, if you can guess by the name, the toughest mainboard series from uh, ASUS and they provide the highest warranty at five years. I'll leave the ASUS ROG, I think it's almost five years, so I'll, I have to verify that. Uh, but the tough series definitely has five years, and here you get a, a tough inside. You can see it from the light here because it's white on white. Essentially, it is a, uh, a sticker. It's a transparent sticker, or a uh, for your bumper. Get the motherboard uh, user's guide. You have inside a driver disc with a badge for your case. Includes also AI suite and all the other software you need. It's an all English manual. Quite detailed, similar to the uh, the V Pro and the or the Z87 Pro and the Z87 Deluxe main wards. You have uh, a SLI cable. The small one since uh, we don't have a double slot uh, spacing on the Micro ATX case, just standard SLI cable. There you have the Q connectors for quick connects for the front panel and a quick connect for a USB. Following the tough coloring uh, coloring theme, you have the brown and black color there. And an IO shield. A different IO shield here for the tough, and it's padded in the back as well. And it's labeled. And uh, lastly, we have a pair of SATA cables. Actually, a two pairs of SATA cables. That is uh, four SATA cables. All they are latching and angled. And uh, actually, one is straight and one is angled. So that makes two latching and uh, two angled latching and two straight. Latching. And I'm going to put all these cutters aside, of course, and go over the rest of the review here. Focus on the main unit itself. All right, so here we have the Z87 Griffin mainboard completely out of packaging. And the first thing we notice, of course, is the fact that it lacks the thermal armor that you see on the Sabertooth uh, Z87 board. That is, of course, because ASUS is offering a se separate package for those who are... Uh, it's essentially an option, and uh, you can still use it uh, uh, completely without it. But uh, for those who want it, it will be available soon. Unfortunately, I don't have one on hand right now to demonstrate to you. And uh, there are some features here that are inherently tied to having that thermal armor. But I will, um, of course, update this video, upload another video to show you that once uh, it does come in. Well, anyway, let's dig in with the features here. First of all, it features the 5X protection that uh, ASUS has been touting for their Z87 series. Of course, part of that is the Digital Plus, Digi Plus VRM design and made from high quality components. You have high efficiency, low RDS MOSFET right underneath those heat sinks and it has high efficiency and high average alloy chokes to go with it. You have eight phases there and also um, CD unique cool looking black capacitors which are rated for up to 10K and uh, that's 10K in hours compared to the 5K capacitors that are uh, being promoted for the segment boards. Those are already quite exp uh, quite uh, impressive and a lot better already than a 2,000 hour rating of the uh, standard uh, non-ASUS main board. Uh, of course that is uh, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 hours under 105 degrees Celsius. But these tough black metallic, cap uh, metallic capacitors 
uh, go an even uh, an even uh, better range in terms of temperatures because it can handle up to minus 70 degrees lower compared to the minus 55 degree uh, Celsius of the regular solid state capacitors and it can go as high as 125 degrees Celsius in operation compared to the 105 degrees Celsius of a standard capacitor and also if you look closely there to prevent uh, the VRM from further heating especially in those trapped areas there are ventilation holes located in the critical areas and uh, not to be confused of course with the matching holes so these matching holes are the standard LJ1150 and the LJ1156 and LJ1155 mounting hole. They are the same. So if you have an old LJ1155, LJ1156 heatsink, you can reuse it using the same mounting hole distance. But unfortunately, the processor requires you to use an LJ1150 Haswell processor. You cannot use an Ivory Bridge or a Sand Bridge and just pop it into these because it won't fit. And also, you have, of course, the uh, not just uh, VRM for the uh, CPU, you have one for the, you have two actually for the memory and also you have the second generation T-topology from ASUS that uh, improves better overclocking yields with the memory and as most of the, uh, as also found in the second boards, you have of course uh, DRAM ICs for protecting your system just in case you get the uh, bad memory you don't want it to affect of course the rest of the system damage especially other the, all the other input components as well have fuses so that uh, you don't get it has ESD protection so that is also part of the 5x protection and also of course just demonstrate that heatsink designer just to so you can appreciate the fact that there is airflow possible that through that angle and this angle as well and of course the uh, tough series are known for having excellent cooling options this one has plenty of fan connectors there is a 8 pin power here in the rear and a 3 pin assistant fan header and this one is unique because it comes uh, it, uh, it it is useful you can also plug in a fan there but you, there is actually a 35 millimeter fan that is part of the armor kit you'll attach here in the rear where that uses that header and of course you get two CPU fan headers as with um, ASUS mainboards, other ASUS mainboards. You have a channel fan header there, 4 BWM. Another channel fan header there. Another one down here. And another one down here at the bottom. All 4 pin PWM fans and of course you can control with AI Suite. And also get the 24 pin power there and USB 3. Uh, 19 pin coming from the Z87 chipset and the 6S exports that are part of the Z87 chipset as well natively and you have a removable BIOS right there in the front panel I.O. and these uh, this is a connector here and uh, that is actually for the uh, direct key for those who are not aware of the direct key it actually allows you to boot directly into UEFI so you don't have to match the delete key or F2 key your system is booting especially if you have a very fast uh, system and you probably won't uh, get the timing right so you can attach maybe your reset key from your system plug into that header so you can you can control it from your front panel of your system or you can if you're on the test bench you can just press the direct key here even when you're booting into windows it will safely shut down windows the next time you power on your system it will be in the UEFI directly and you have the flashback LED for BIOS flashback which uh, allows you to upgrade your BIOS or UEFI without any CPU, without any DRAM, without any drives, without any video cards. All you need is, of course, standby power, hence the LED right there that uh, when that is lit up, you can use a BIOS flashback. Of course, you need also, as uh, the name is used to be called, USB BIOS flashback, of course, because you need a USB uh, flash drive, that either FAT16 or FAT32 formatted, that contains the uh, the the UEFI file that you need to upgrade to. Also these headers right here, these are actually thermistor connector cables, uh, four, four thermistor connector cables which will be part of the armor kit that you will purchase separately for this because it allows you to connect to various components such as video cards or your DRAM or other critical components that you can monitor them directly and also USB 2.0 ports here so that's four in total, so two headers. You have a trusted platform module 
you have your clear CMOS jumper. You have your channel 5 header here we showed earlier. You have this one is actually a TB header. I'm showing for the Thunderbolt. We've seen this in other main budget for ASUS. I believe it requires a PCIe X1 device to, uh, that uses that. You have your front file audio and SP diff out. And of course the audio, you have ALC 892 Realtek audio. There it outputs to the uh, rear analog port connection here. And also you get the Intel. Uh, this is one of the new ones. Uh, this will be the i217V. Very fast with that uh, Intel LAN, uh, Gigabit LAN, and you have four USB 3.0 ports. Of course, from these are from the natively from the Z87 chipset. You have a digital audio output. You have four of that is uh, also right above the uh, HDMI port. Of course, the HDMI port supports 4K display. I believe, I believe it's HDMI 1.4B. You have a DVI port and four USB 2.0 ports. And as for the PCIe distribution, of course you get the standard 16 lanes. If you populate the top part, because that's 16 lanes of Gen 3, PCIe X16. If you plug in a second um, card here, or just plug it in directly to the second area here, this runs at 8x. So if you have SLI 8x, 8x of Gen 3, and again, if you only have one card, it will run at a 16x, full 16x lane directly from the CPU. And the third uh, dark gray, we say X slot, X16 slot here, is actually an X4 slot that is uh, PCIe Gen 2.0. Now, not Gen 3, this is Gen 2, right there at the bottom. Although, um, also a PCIe X1 slot right in between them. And uh, that's pretty much it for the overview of the ASUS Z87 Griffin mainboard. And uh, we'll continue on, of course, with the rest of the review. Whenever I get the armor, I'll show you that later on when it arrives. And also, let's, uh, let's click on the link below. Go to hightechlegion.com to read the rest of the review. Subscribe for daily updates. Go to facebook.com slash hightechlegion. And facebook.com slash hdlreviews. Twitter.com slash hightechlegion. And uh, once again, this is Ron signing out. Thanks for watching.